R Rhea. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first one. It is early in the morning. We are getting ready to go. So I've got Alan here who is ready. And then for me uh, to go to the mosque, I'm actually wearing a dress that I got in India that covers basically my wrist down to my ankles. And it's not mandatory, but I am going to wear a headscarf, which Alan is going to help me with. Just a simple way from you. Come this way? Yeah, you make the triangle across. Okay. Can you do it in front of you? So let's make a simple way for a woman. Actually, I don't really understand, but let's try it. Well, you know better than I do. So you make so a triangle here. Triangle. Yeah. And then don't touch me. I'm just Voodoo, voodoo is, uh, right, you just, Alan just had uh, a shower to clean. Hi, how are you? Yeah. So happy to see you. So I can't actually touch Alan yeah. while we do just this. Like this. And then, and then you can put here. You okay. Put, uh, uh, pin, uh, pin. I don't have a pin. And then I have to All right, so we're going to go over to the mosque. I don't know if you can hear it right now. Um, as I said, I don't have to cover my hair. It's not compulsory. The only time you need to cover your hair is actually when you go into a mosque, but this is a, a special day, a holy day, so I'm going to do that. Also to show sign of respect, but um, a lot of people don't know this, but actually in Islam, women aren't forced to cover their hair at all. You know, we know of some countries that make people cover their hair, women cover their hair, but it's actually not a part of Islam. And in Indonesia, some women cover their hair, some women don't. Some women who cover their hair don't cover it all the time. It depends on the situation. So I guess I'm ready. We are just a five minute walk. It's just around the corner and you can actually hear the mosque right now. I need to make sure that I've got everything. This is my first time live streaming on my phone and it's because it's such an important day I'm a little bit worried about the internet connection but I have water it's early in the morning so I shouldn't need it I have a power bank with chargers and then I also brought just my let me make sure earphones in case it's hard to hear I'll put that in for you guys and I have a phone I have a camera wipe. I think I am ready to go. Yeah, okay. Alan, are you ready to go? What a lot of people don't know is probably for the last five years, I have wanted to actually celebrate, experience Ramadan. And that was from a food perspective to understand uh, the role of food and fasting in Ramadan. And so knowing Alan for the last two years, I've learned a lot about it. And so today we are going to go to the mosque and it should be, you said like an hour to two hours? One and a half hours. One and a half hours. So there will be some speaking and then some praying. And we're going early because there will be women on one side, men on the other. We're gonna see if I can get right in the middle to see the whole thing, but we are going outside. So a lot of people pray inside and then others pray outside. He prefers to pray outside because this mosque is right on the water. It's a beautiful mosque. And so he says there's a nice breeze. And right now it has been so hot out that having that breeze I think is really great. I'm just gonna show you him. Oh, can you come over here? So, so what is that called? It's called uh, in Arabic, maybe they call turban. Okay. In Indonesia, in Indonesia we call sorban. 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 So I have my Arabic blood, my Arabic tradition. Mm -hmm. so, And so for you, you cover your head yeah. for this, and then you also cover your, you wear clothing that goes down to your ankles. Yeah. Um, so Alan's wearing jeans. He said he wanted to keep it casual for today. Okay. Are we go. ready to go? Yeah. All right. Uh, are you gonna lock the door? Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is the first time also that I have time on the phone live streaming, first time live streaming an event. So please experiencing Eid. So a lot of new things for me, but I wanted to take you along because um, I, this was something that I, I did not know a lot about, wanted to experience. And I thought other people just might want to see what it's like as well. Oh, Joseph, so nice. <laughs> Joseph, so nice to see you from Cuenca. All right. You can see a lot of people are out. Oh, my mom's on. Guys, the truth is part of the reason I decided to do this, I went back and forth on whether I should live stream this. And part of the reason was I thought my mom would be interested in it. So I thought if no one watches, at least I can share this with my mom. But it's so nice to see so many of you online as well. Let me just put, I gotta put my shoes on. And doing live streaming while well, you're going somewhere, it's not easy. I'm just gonna put on my shoes. All right, I'm ready. Got my bag. Alan is fixing his headscarf. Ooh, his sorbonne again. One other thing I do want to uh, apologize for is I have had a cough for like the last three months. It's just from the pollution and the heat in other countries. And so I might cough from time to time, like right now. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right. So we thought we'd get there early, although I can see lots of people already heading over. This mosque is so beautiful. Let me turn the corner. So I, oh. You can see it's already so busy. This is not the biggest mosque in the city. There's actually a grand mosque. But I think this is the favorite. shoes off Alan where are we gonna take our shoes off do you want to put the shoes in my bag okay It's almost impossible to find afterwards. <laughs> yeah, mom, that's exactly what I said to Alan. I was like, uh, what are we going to do? I did bring this bag. Thank you. 
That's the men's entrance. Okay, so this is the men's entrance. This is the women's entrance. Although there are men going down there as well. Alan, am I coming with you? Should I come with you? Or is... Okay. Let me just show you more of this mosque. All right, here are the people outside. So you can see on this side, it's men. Should I go on the other side? So you might wonder why it's separated. I think it's a little bit like, uh, so there are no distractions. And so you'll often see, um, sometimes there's a divider, sometimes it's men with women behind them, and then sometimes it's like this, where they're on the outside here. They just put them on two different sides. Okay. You can, if you want, you want to sit in the woman area, yeah. you can put your, your camera at that, uh, at that black watch. On what black box? The, the black chair. There is a black chair, a black coach. There is a black chair. Just trying to find somewhere to put my camera. I do have it on a tripod. Oh, there's more shoes here. We could have come here. You can sit there and put your camera there on the black, on the black coach. Bench? Yeah, bench. Yeah. And then... And then facing your camera. From, oh, I could put it right here. Bed. Will there be anybody? I'm not, I'm not allowed to do it. I know. Yeah. Okay, so will there... Sorry guys, just trying to figure this out. Will there be anyone in the front? Yeah. So everybody's facing the front and there will be someone there. Because yeah, I can put my camera yeah. on the corner here. Yeah. But this is that coach, so it's facing to the sea. Okay. Yeah. All, right. okay. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. I guess I'm on my own. We didn't know if it would be like this or not. So many people coming in. We are here early, but I guess this is like if you're Christian or Catholic and you go to Mass, everybody wants a good seat. And so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to sit. We thought it would be a little bit different. I do think though I should put in my mic just so I don't disturb people.
right, guys, let me know if you can still hear me. I think what I might do is actually move out of the way just a little bit more so you can see more and then also I'm not so obvious. Can you hear me? Let me know. Okay, perfect. So, a couple things I wanted to talk about because you will see women here in very elaborate outfits, very beautiful, like these women in front of me. Look at the detail on their dresses, it's gorgeous. But then also, you will see people in like very simple, plain, modest clothing. And then one of the things you will see, you know, in a lot of different countries is that women choose to wear, this obviously is a very special occasion, and to go to the mosque, people do tend to be very, very modest. But in Indonesia, you will see women wearing lots of different variations of covering up. And so you will see people wear a hijab, which is uh, sometimes very, very fashionable and beautiful, sometimes very modest. Sometimes you will see people covering up even more. Sometimes you'll see people covering up to here. Um, that's a woman's choice, how much they want to do it. So Alan says he feels the hijab is beautiful, but he thinks that is enough. He doesn't feel comfortable covering up more of the face. Um, but in, 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 Indonesia, in Indonesia, it's very much <clears throat> a woman's choice. And then I've seen lots of women and sometimes I will see them wearing a hijab and other times they're not. And then of course at home, it depends sometimes on how well you know the person and how conservative they are. But I've never been told to wear one other than in a mosque. And actually in this mosque, I had this, I carry this with me. In the Grand Mosque, which is a giant mosque, uh, the women were security guards actually. And so they, didn't realize I had one and were just looking for one to help me out and then actually helped put it on me. So everyone here is very, very nice. It's not something that's forced. I think it just goes to show you that, you know, in religion, there's religion and then there's countries. So what happens in places like Iran, you cannot say is representative of the religion because that does not happen at all here. Let me show you a little bit more now. People are starting to get settled in and it's so so I'm gonna wipe this, it's starting to get humid out. You'll also see here, people have prayer mats. So they're just something uh, to make things a little bit more comfortable. Alan actually travels with one that's not like a rug like this, which is comfortable. Okay, before we get started, I did want to share one other thing. Oh, I was looking at the chat here. So before we get started, I did want to share one other thing here because this was the most thing that I was the most curious about, and that is why do people fast for 30 days? 
I'm not gonna get this completely right, so if anyone here is Muslim, it won't be perfect. Um, oh, mom, yeah, so different types of head covering is a personal choice. So some people are very fashionable, some people are modest, some people like to cover up more than others. But when you come here, you definitely need to be very modest. So I'm just getting out of the way of somebody. Some of the head coverings are convenient, so it's just like a, something you can slip over your head, actually, like the woman in front of me in the purple. She just slips that over, and then you can decide how long you want it, how short you want it. Uh, there are different ways to tie it now that some are more fashionable than others. But let's talk about the fasting. So the fasting, Alan explained to me, there are two main reasons for it. One, it's about a cleanse. And actually, in Indonesia, when you... Let me know that you can still hear me. <laughs> okay. I want to be respectful, but also explain some things. Um, so the 30 days is about, one, about a cleanse. It's a cleanse of your body, of your mind. And it's also about a sacrifice so that you understand what it's like to be uh, to be what people who are less fortunate than you experience so the idea of experiencing hunger day after day and also at the same time uh, it's meant that you know you have cleansed yourself because you fasted for 30 days here in Indonesia they do have different ways to say like happy Ramadan to people so there is, um, I'm gonna get it wrong, Hari, Selamat Hari Raya, which means like happy holiday. But also, Alan said that's mostly what you use in posters and things or on this YouTube thumbnail. Um, the other thing that you might do is say the equivalent when you greet someone uh, that it is, I apologize, ma'a for the unclean things I said or did to you. So it's not only about cleaning yourself, but renewing your relationship with other people and then also that connection to people who are less fortunate than you. And one of the things I would say is in Indonesia, they are very much um, aware of people who are less fortunate. They're very giving to both people and to animals. I've never been anywhere where people Whatever they have on their plate that's left over, they will always give to a stray cat or dog. And they're also very giving to other people, especially older women. Alan says it's because when he sees older women, he, he sees his mom. And he would never want his mother to suffer like that. So he doesn't want another mother to suffer like that. All right, things are starting to settle down a little bit. And you can start to see some of these dresses are amazing. Oh, I turned on filter by accident. I find here in Indonesia, a lot of the women wear pastels. It's very common to see purple, which actually I think might traditionally mean it's used for a funeral or a death. But you see a lot of light purples, light pinks. You see a lot of like bronze and golds as well. And then one of the things I was really curious to see what would happen, I've just been looking around, is technically, you know, I think it's just like any religion, there are the rules that are very old and then there are modern rules. So technically, um, some of the things that Alan has told me is that, for example, men cannot wear gold. And I think that goes back to maybe old, older times when people might have lusted or wanted to have gold or prioritized gold or were flashy with their money. And so men cannot wear gold. They can only wear other, they can wear jewelry, but it can't be gold. Um, and then also in terms of 
uh, change your, your body for makeup, coloring your hair, things like that. You're not technically supposed to do it. Alan said he can wear, he can color his hair because he's going gray. He can color it brown, but he's not supposed to color it black. Um, women are not supposed to wear makeup, but I see they are here. Uh, it's really hard to get your nails done here because you're not supposed to get your nails done. I guess with makeup, you can always remove it, but nails, you can also remove it, but it's harder to do. Um, and so I think, you know, with any religion, there's modernization and people re-evaluating. There are the bigger things that they follow, but maybe some of the smaller rules they're willing to bend. So you do see some Muslims, um, they might have alcohol uh, or they might eat pork. Um, but I think that with, you know, with everyone, if you're Catholic, technically on Fridays, you're not supposed to eat meat, but I think most Catholics forget that. All right, I think we're starting to get started. So, obviously, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what's happening. <laughs> we're going to experience this both together for the first time. But I have heard this prayer before. Before we get started, I also wanted to share one other thing that a lot of people don't know. Um, Muslims actually agree with Christianity up until the point just past Jesus. They don't agree with all of the details, but the God that they pray to, Allah, is the same God that Christians pray to. Um, and they have a lot of, like the Old Testament, their stories are very similar. So the difference is uh, they believe that Jesus did not come, was not resurrected. It was not a miracle, but actually it was almost not quite like an illusion, but the person who came back was a regular man. But they do believe Jesus was a person and that he did not have magical powers to come back three days later. The other thing is they believe, they interpret the Old Testament of saying that after Jesus, there would be another prophet who came um, and that prophet is Muhammad Muhammad was a man and he brought together he brought with him the story of the evolution of what God wanted and that uh, is where things start to differ but in principle a lot of people think that Muslims are very different from Christians but they're actually not and a lot of the principles and things are exactly the same how they express it is different but it's very, very similar. They also agree with Judaism and recommend and recognize it and respect it. Um, again, there's a certain point where some of these religions diverge, but they're not actually very different at all. And so for a lot of Muslims, when they see or experience Islamophobia, they don't really understand why or how, because they're not in disagreement. They are just expressing it slightly differently and they are praying to the same God. Oh, I think actually there's a little bit of English I heard. So you will see, I would love to show this to you, but I think I will lose my seat because I'm sitting actually up on a bench. Um, but out there is actually the sea, and that's what makes it so nice is there's a little bit of a breeze coming in. 
you can go inside, and I have been inside uh, this mosque, but this makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, you can see it's getting really full now. Oh, my mother wants to know, if I went inside, would I be able to film inside? So yes, I have filmed inside before. So to go inside, um, to come to a mosque, you don't need to wear a headscarf. I could not have one on right now. To go inside, you do. So that is the only thing. But the same thing for men. Men actually have to... So before you go in to pray, you need to clean yourself so that you're clean before you go in. And then also, men have to cover up um, they, not their head, although a lot of men, there are a lot of hats that people wear and different things like you saw Ellen wear for Eid, but they do need to cover up ankle to wrist as well. So if you come to a mosque and you don't have something to wear, generally inside, they have like a like a rack of things where you just kind of put it on top. It's like a one piece and I can see a lot of women wearing it. In fact, there's a woman in front of me wearing it. Um, where it's just a one piece, you put it over top and it, it keeps you modest. The idea is to focus on uh, your experience in there rather than focusing on yourself or having other people people look at you in a way that's not pure. But I'm just gonna show you this woman in this gold outfit because it looks beautiful. If I can. There we go. See, you can see the girl, she's in like a bronze outfit. And that's just a one piece you can put over top. And then also we've got these two little, these younger girls down here. And you just kind of throw that on top and it's just a cotton outfit that is quite cool. Now, in terms of when do people, oh, the sun's coming out, it's really bright. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get around the sun. In terms of when do women start wearing the hijab? So that's really up to the person. A lot of people think it starts at puberty, but you'll see, you'll see right here. Oh my goodness, look at this. There's a little girl here. A lot of, she's hiding behind her mom. So you'll see this girl right here, she doesn't. Uh, oh, Kristen asked if I needed special permission to video. No, I've been in tons of mosques. They, in Indonesia, they have no problem. Like They actually just want to welcome people. Probably the easiest country to film in. All right, it is getting busy. Um, so, but back to the children, I don't know if you can see, if I can even zoom in on her. There's another little girl. Oh, so you can see a little girl there and her right there. So they are covering their hair as well. I think that is more about, uh, you know, when you're a little girl, you want to look like your parents. And so you will see, I know someone with a, a younger girl who has a, a young daughter and she wanted to because she, that she sees other women wearing that. So that's, um, that's something that she wanted to do. Let's see. Oh, Kristen, they are so um, welcoming with all of this kind of stuff. I mean, obviously I'm staying, trying to stay out of the way, not making a big deal about it, but I just find Indonesians are just really great about this kind of thing. And also, I just wanted to share what it's like because a lot of people don't know. They've never been to anything like this. I've never been to anything like this. And so even for Alan and I, we weren't sure exactly how it was going to work. We thought that it would be one bigger area with women on one side, men on the other. 
but there would be like a, a lane in between that I could film to show both, but it's a little bit, bit different here. Uh, and then, Mom, can you ask me that question again? I'm not sure how. Oh, here we go. My mother just asked, at what age would the boys have to be on the men's side? Um, I haven't seen any little boys here. But you know what? I think if there was a mother with a younger boy. But again, I think probably the rule for that might be like puberty. But on this side, you pretty much only see women. Oh, and actually, look, I do see some little boys get come down the stairs. So I once asked Alan if there are different hats that you can wear. Like the little boys are also covering their head. Everybody is pretty much covering their head here, but with different hats. Um, they don't have significance. It's just, again, a personal preference. It could be where you're from, um, what your dad wore, but you can see like a lot of people are wearing things that are very different to what Alan has chosen, which is more of an Arabic style. But then you've got, see, you've got a little girl wearing one next to another little girl who's not. My camera is, the phone is fogging up a little as the sun comes out. So as I said, in terms of what people wear, I find in, I find in Indonesia, a lot of women wear pastels, they wear white. You don't see a lot of black. There are a couple of women here wearing all black, but you don't see it a lot. And then, um, you do see that more in Malaysia. So it very much is like a regional thing of where you are. But in Indonesia, I see a lot of women wear pastel, pink, purple. You see people in white, green, those kinds of colors. It is very hot here. Although in most of the countries, it's very hot. I can't imagine wearing black, to be honest. And then what's happening in front? Kristen said, right? Nothing. So everyone is face down towards the sea, which is also toward Mecca. So any house you go into, um, this is actually funny uh, because I didn't know. Any hotel room or building that you go into, there will be something on the ceiling with an arrow. And I can't remember what it says. I'll have to look it up. Basically, it says it's the direction towards Mecca. That is the direction you always pray in. I thought it was saying the word was for like emergency route or like uh, evacuation route but a lot of times it would be pointed into a corner so I thought are people making a joke like they are um, they've moved the sign but no it's actually it's towards Mecca and then in front of me these are just kind of people coming in more places to put your shoes and this is the back of the mosque and so you'll see a lot of men are coming in and then they're heading up the stairs the sun is really coming out and then I just want to show you how busy it's gotten. This is still the women's side, but it's all come along the back. I actually feel bad like I should go to the back. Actually, I might do that and then kind of stand in the back here. All right, let's do that. I'll show you a little bit more of the, of the mosque. More shoes. I'm glad I took ours. 
keluarga mereka menjadi keluarga yang soleh itu soleh anak-anaknya menjadi anak-anak yang soleh so I hope I can go back through there but this is I'm just going to show you they haven't started yet but this is and so what happens is you have to take off your shoes because as you come in here everything needs to be clean you'll see people over here actually before you come in and pray you need to wash you have to wash your hands your feet to show you a little bit of the men the hands your feet your mouth everything should be clean and then i'm assuming your head because whenever alan goes to pray his hair is always wet when he's done you can see so many people there is someone in it's a person on a pa oh look i just found another bench it's a little bit wet but i am in the Okay, so there is someone over. Uh, there is someone over the PA. I do believe we started the prayer part, although people are still coming in. You can see that guy has his prayer mat with him, and he's with his son. Some other people coming in. This is a place like you really need to get here early. So on, in Indonesia, they pray five times a day. You don't have to pray five times a day, it's up to you. Actually, one of the things that I really respect, hold on, let me put this down. So I can step away a little bit, I feel like my face is right in there. One of the things I really respect about Islam is that um, there's no one way to correctly follow it. So they have things that they would like you to do that people aspire to do. So that would be to, fi to pray five times a day. Um, and there are a host of other things, but not everyone does everything. So for example, sometimes Alan will pray five times a day and sometimes he prays one time a day. My editor, Witty, because one of the prayers is at 10 and the other one is at, in the middle of the night, he will um, almost do like a meditation in between the two in the middle of the night. So they've said to me, because I'm like, do I have to do this or do I need to do this? Um, and everyone has said to me, you don't have to do anything. Women don't have to cover their hair. They can choose to cover their hair. Of course, let's be honest, there's probably cultural and community expectations. But in terms of actual Islam, you can choose to express modesty as you would like. So here you'll find most women, this is a conservative community, so you'll find most young girls will cover their hair but then also they're wearing jeans and like a sweater. So they're not covering up in long dresses or anything like that, unless they come to the mosque. When you come to pray, that's something serious. But I think that's the same as going to a church. You know, what you wear out on the street might not be, you know, what you're wearing on Sunday morning. So it looks like now, this, the men's side actually, you can hear things a little bit differently. I'm gonna cough again, sorry. <coughs> oh. So, the interesting thing is there's prayer five times a day. So, if you're in Indonesia, unless you're in Bali, you're going to hear the call to prayer. I actually, I find it really um, soothing the way they do it if you're at a good mosque. For example, this mosque, the person is very soothing. And actually, there are famous people who have who are known to have prayers, they've got big YouTube channels, and so they can become quite famous that way for having such a great soothing voice. Others I've been to, it's like jolted me in the middle of the night, woken up, and you can be very close to a mosque. They have like this intense megaphone. So there are some places, for example, in Bukatini, which is a town uh, like an hour away from here, that I will not stay at the hotel because I don't like the call to prayer. I'm not supposed to say stuff like that, but it's the truth. And I do talk to Indonesians about it, about how it's just like non-stop, like shouting. All right, here's one of the prayers. This is a really 
common prayer that I hear a lot. And actually, you'll see there's an overspill of men who are up there. And also you can see some men have come in, there must be an overspill. So in general, men do come to the front. I think it's because they don't want to be men to be distracted looking at women. Whereas women, they're not going to be distracted by looking at the men in front of them. The young girls do look really pretty. I find in Indonesia, it's a really beautiful thing to see people in traditional dress like this. Yeah, the men don't always cover their head. Sini, Bu. The men don't always cover their head, and you can see actually so alan wore pants today but i want to show you this guy has like a camo themed i want to call it sarong that is not the proper but a lot of men if you can see right there they wear a it's like a one piece how do i describe it like hoop like it, it goes all together and then they fold it in a special way that has to remain clean it can't touch anything and actually uh when alan gets ready i think i mentioned this earlier once he kind of washes i can't touch him he helped me with my headscarf but i don't think he's actually supposed to and he went and washed again oh yeah it's getting busy now and you can see a man with another you can see a couple different kinds of hats here and then again more people not wearing any and then you've got these guys who are like, where are we going to go? <laughs> Should have come earlier.
getting it's getting crowded here. But people are okay with me being here. And I've got a little bit more room. Wait, I'm just gonna show you. You can see it goes all the way back there. I actually don't know how I'm gonna find Alan afterwards. We did not discuss that. And I've also got his phone because I'm using his phone as a hotspot. Well, Mum, I the hostel is only a two minute walk away, so I think I'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna move a little bit further back again. Oh, Kristen, it's fine as long as the men go in front, which is okay. They are really actually welcoming to foreigners.
يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت من sure what's happening here now. Some of the men are leaving in hopes that they can get a spot on the other side. You can see some running over there. And then mom and 
terms of your question of their hands in the air and then also the kneeling, I would suspect it's the same, uh, the same thing as in Catholicism, you know, to the above them would probably mean heaven, Allah, and then to kneel would be the same as what Catholics do when we are always on our knees up and down, up and down. But it looks like this is a little bit of a break in the prayer. It's really hot out. I need to get some water. Oh, this part is actually a speech. This is not a prayer. Yeah, you'll see people are taking a long little break. This would be more, I think. I'm not sure if this is the serum part. I, I think it is a serum. Serum. Sermon. Sermon. So to go over to the other, putting the shoes back on. But you can see here lots of people walking along the water. It is beautiful here. A lot of people actually come here for sunset. Oh, uh, mom, that kid is taking the, putting the shoes back on. You can see here. His dad is just helping him put his shoes on. Because if they go over there, oh, if they go over there, they will um, need to wash again. So he's keeping his feet clean. And you can see, I think a lot of people came for this prayer and they're either taking a smoke break. Almost everyone smokes in Indonesia. It's a strange thing, but a lot of the men, I don't know if they feel like they're done or if they're just taking a bit of a break. I think while they do this part, I'm going to put on shoes and show you a little bit more. Just give me one second. I'm just getting my shoes ready. All right. As it looks like this is a little bit of a break, I'm going to take my shoes out and I'll take you around the water front to show you this property. Which girl with the phone? Okay, hold on. I need to go, to, oh, here we go. You kind of, you can't put your shoes on inside because it needs to stay clean. So I'm going to Put this down for a second while I put my shoes on. Ooh. So this is definitely a sermon, which you hear on Friday. So Friday is kind of the big day to go to the mosque. If you're going to go and pray. How am I doing here? I think this headscarf needs to be fixed. I'm stuck here amongst. Oh, my mother did actually come and visit me in Ecuador. 
but Indonesia is a whole other level of traveling. But she has come to visit me in Ecuador. We've also gone to Spain together. We've gone to uh, Mexico together. Let me show you this area. This area has the most beautiful sunset. Oh yeah, you can see some people are leaving. This is just... Oh yeah, we did go to Maui together too. Good point. All right. Now, this is not the most beautiful bay. It's a bay, and so a lot of garbage comes in. But you can walk to the top of there, and there's a sign of Padang. And there's also a terrible story of this girl, Siti Nurbaya. So Siti was a local girl who was in love with this man. But her, her, her family owned this very rich family money, and they couldn't pay it back. They were poor. And so they said to this family that they owed money for. We don't have any money, but we could give you our daughter for your son. And so, uh, but Siti was in so much love that she threw herself off that mountain right here. I don't know how she threw herself off. It, it is pretty steep in some parts when you walk it. But anyway, so a lot of things in this neighborhood in Padang have the name Siti Nurbaya. I don't know if it's a true story or it's a legend. I mean, Indonesians love a good love story, so it might not be true. But let me take you around here a little bit. So I have been here in, I've been here in uh, for sunset so many times because the sun comes in and really illuminates this mosque and it's beautiful. Yeah, it is a sad story. That's why I don't know if it's true. This mosque was built, I don't even think, five years ago. It's quite new. And um, I think that's why they have the Grand Mosque here, which is this ginormous mosque. Uh, but it's, it doesn't have the same kind of presence as this mosque on the water, which is all white. And then at night, they light it up in different colors. Oh, here's the men's side. I see other women here, so I think it's... No, actually, it wasn't government spending. So I think the Grand Mosque was government spending. I think it was, um, I don't know, I don't know 100%, but I think the Grand Mosque probably was government spending. This was all private. So I'll show you it again. It's really beautiful. Now, these, there are four towers and one in the middle, and then you can see in the center there, You've got the crescent moon with a star in it, which is kind of a, sim a symbol of Islam and also in the towers. The towers at one point, people would actually do the call to prayer by walking out, but today they do not. But this is so beautiful. You can kind of come up here. I've been up here and I've been up here without. To go inside, you need to wear a headscarf, but to like walk around here, you don't, but you do need to. I mean, you, you do need to dress properly just to be respectful. Um, but you could have, I think I had on like pants and a, a shirt and it was fine. And people are so nice, they want to know where you're from, uh, what you think about things, how you like Indonesia. Like I honestly find in Indonesia, Muslims are so uh, welcoming and warm. And the thing about Islam is, did I see a collection at one point? You did see a collection. So, you know, like the Catholics, there's always somebody coming around collecting money. This thing though, I think it had very generous sponsors. Let me show you. At night, everyone, like the whole community comes down here to watch the sunset. And then the sun actually just shines on the white and it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And they have all of these, um, the glass windows and things. The sun just shines through it. And then at night, it's they just, project different colors onto it. It's always really, really nice. But yes, um, yes, the money probably would go towards the mosque or it would probably go towards like uh, people who need money, basically. Less fortunate people. Um, but the mosque, I think, does okay for money, especially this one. There are so many mosques here. 
and really you can't, it's hard to stay somewhere in Indonesia in a hotel where you're not close to a mosque. So that's why I really appreciate a good call to prayer because there's one at 10, 10.30 and then there's another one at 1.30 I think, 1, 1.30 and then there's another one at 5 a.m. So you really do want to have like that good meditative kind of prayer versus man on Fridays in Bukatingi, it's like they're screaming into your ear. It, this is, I think, one of the most beautiful. Um, it's just, it's just really nice to see. And then to be honest, I don't know what is happening here. This looks like some kind of ship that they are taking apart. I think I remember a couple months ago it was in the water. So I, I think maybe, I don't know, someone has decided we need to get that out of the water. But I will say this. So this whole area here is a beach, but because it's a cove, oh, and you can start to look, I'm going to show you. I don't know if you can see all of that garbage. This beach gets so much garbage. It is disgusting. Um, and it's, oh yeah, I'll be able to show you a little bit more of it. And it's not because people here are throwing stuff. It's because, well, as I say, the ocean throws back what does not belong in it. And so a lot of this garbage is coming from other, is coming from the ocean, basically. And so we think that we single-use plastic isn't a big deal and that we recycle a lot. But then when you come here, eh, the beach is so nice. You can, a lot of people come here they they have little um, shops set up all along there where you can get like very cheap drinks under a dollar and some noodles or just like cheap snacks but the actual beach is so gross tide is in so you can't quite see the beach but I'm gonna climb up on these rocks so you can see because I like to walk on out here in the morning because there are trees um, and it's really quite nice but it's so disgusting and actually this really just makes me look at this this is how horrible it is there is a documentary called plastic island and it talks about this guys look you can see clothes you can see plastic plastic island look at all of this this came from the ocean and you have people every morning trying to clean up the beach they cannot keep up with it Yeah, so Plastic Island, it's on Netflix. Kristen, you might actually really enjoy it. It's a, I watched it before coming to, um, I watched it before coming to Indonesia because it was very interesting to talk about the garbage around the world. And I think we really, we see it as like, oh, people in other countries don't know how to take care of their garbage. And, in Indonesia, 90,000 straws are used a day. 90,000 a day. And that's because Indonesia has almost 300,000 people. And they love cold drinks. They really love cold drinks. And so they have, uh, oh, look at this behind me. Look how beautiful that is. This is gorgeous. Anyway, so 90,000 straws a day. And so I have like Alan now knows to say, and we feel so bad when I'm like, no straw, no straw. I don't want a straw. Like I'm an adult, I don't need a straw. So 90,000 straws a day, lots of cold drinks. They get put in plastic cups because I think since COVID, uh, people didn't want to have glass anymore. They moved to plastic because that's what everybody was told that they had to have in order to reopen. And then they've just kind of stuck with it because it means you don't have to wash it or anything like that. But also part of it is Foreigners have been told, don't, you need a straw, don't drink from the cup. <sighs> anyway, I have my own straw. I don't bring it a lot because other than to drink out of a coconut, an adult does not need a straw. We can go strawless. So I'm constantly asking for no straw. And then Alan will ask if they have a plastic top. So sometimes I do have a plastic cup. We try to have no top, no no top, no straw, and then not for them to put it in a plastic bag. Oh, look at these guys, they are beautiful. Look at, look at their outfits. It is so beautiful. Oh, this whole family, they're so cute. Oh my goodness. 
I think nobody really shows like modern nobody shows modern Islam like the money the beauty the you know everybody's got phones technology it's not like people people who are Muslim are not somehow backward they're just like any other religion and the, oh my goodness seriously look at them oh yeah his dad loves the car a lot of people in West Sumatra have a lot of money so um, what was I talking about oh okay let's go back to the plastic the other thing is though so plastic really bothers me as a tourist you know people make fun of me for constantly saying no plastic always having like a bag and stuff but the other issue is not locals in Indonesia Indonesia has plastic garbage what do they call it garbage towns whole towns where people live in mountains of garbage and it's not from their own garbage Canada the US Europe sends so much garbage to other countries like Indonesia so outside Jakarta I haven't been there I want to go but there is basically this garbage mountain and it's because we as Westerners want plastic we think we're recycling but we're not recycling it actually a lot of it is not recycled and it goes to countries like this and you know a lot of it doesn't actually make it to garbage mountain it ends up in the ocean and the ocean brings it in here so i think a lot of times westerners especially tourists like to oh it's bright westerners and tourists like to say to blame people like oh they don't know how to recycle where's the recycling bin but when you do come to other countries especially places like cuba people reuse a lot um, and they don't well in cuba they don't have a lot of plastic because they don't have a lot of anything but in asia the idea of having like a plastic cup for coffee is very much a status symbol and so um, they for a lot of people who now were in the country or in the countryside um, for them to have access to be able to, like on Instagram, they see all of these things. A plastic coffee cup has become status. So they want the coffee cup with a sticker on it. They want it in a bag. They want like all of those things because those are things they aspire to have, younger people. I just hope that changes someday. All right, let me. So this is definitely the sermon part. I don't see Alan anywhere. I might go around the other side to see if I can see him. Oh, these women walked that way. I don't know. I don't know. It's like prayer, sermon, prayer. So, let me just talk about the rest of the day while I figure out. Maybe I will go see Alan. Um, after this. His family is not here. I don't know if they chose to go to another mosque or actually, as I said, there are no rules in Islam. You don't actually have to go to a church. You, um, in Islam, it's like you don't have to worship at a church to worship. So you can do it at home and a lot of people do. Uh, they don't go to a church and it's not expected that you would go to a church. A lot of people won't go to a church, maybe, oh, sorry, church, mosque. A lot of people won't go to a mosque at all. Some people will only come here on Friday, so Friday is a very important day. So usually for Alan, um, I would say, if he's praying five times a day, he usually does, it's almost like a meditative thing where we'll be talking, he's like, okay, I'm gonna go pray, and then I'll be right back. And he, oh, these guys are getting their pictures taken again. Okay. Um, and it's almost like a meditative thing. I actually really encourage him to pray five times a day, and that's because he's so relaxed afterwards. It's only five, maybe 10 minutes, and he, even if he's very stressed, he will go, he takes that time. It's almost, for me, like meditation. He says he doesn't need to meditate because he has prayer, so that's why I kind of equate it to meditation. But he always comes back so calm. Are there any statues inside? No. But on the ceiling, I hope I get this right, there are 99 sayings, phrases of Allah that will be on the ceiling there. But no statues. Um, as you know, you can't show an image of Muhammad 
Oh, let me fix my, my hair is gray too, so that's one advantage of having stuff like this. Um, you can't show an image of Muhammad. Nobody knows what Muhammad looks like. People have guess at what Muhammad looks like, so a lot of times you see Muslims, they have a little bit of hair here. Mom, I think you might remember South Park had an episode where they showed Muhammad as a bear in a bear costume and actually people were in uproar because you cannot try to depict what Muhammad is and part of that is um, I don't think you're supposed to worship him. So the idea is in Christianity here was that, you know, over Christmas in Nova Scotia, the internet is always terrible on Christmas Day, and that's because everybody's live streaming, uh, watching Netflix, video chatting, all of those kinds of things. And so I wanted, I was worried that that would happen as well here, but Alan said that he thought it would be okay in the morning because um, most people would be at a mosque praying. But now that people are leaving, oh, look at this cute little girl. So he thought that because everybody would be at the mosque, I would have some free time for to be live. So if I drop out, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm back. I'm going to stick close to the mosque. There might be, oh, I think there's a cell tower right there. Anyway, I might drop out. I think I'm going to see if I can find Alan because it feels like that that might have been it or at least it for some people. Let's take a look. At, see, there's still some men sitting here. So I don't know if they're listening to the sir. Sermon? Sermon. Oh my goodness. Sermon. I don't know if they're listening to the sermon. Alan's hat is, or headpiece is different. Let's see if I can find him. And and maybe we can answer some questions if I can find him. Yeah, it feels like we're definitely at the part where most people are leaving. All right, let's go. I don't really want to go onto the street, but I can't walk through there. Uh, I don't know what to do here. I could take my shoes off again. Not easy to find someone. We should have thought about this for sure. All right. Just walking out onto the street. This is the main street. Bye the waterfront and you can see that there are lots of little places to eat now this is not like a big tourist town most people which honestly blows my mind because West Sumatra and Padang is known to have the best food in all of Indonesia within Indonesia there are lots of rumah makans or Padang nasi Padang which means like Padang rice this town Padang is known they're known to have the best cooks. When you go all over Indonesia, people from here have gone to other places, opened up restaurants, and they're known to be the best restaurants. But no one comes here. And so there are two types of tourists that come here. One, surfers, because there's an island just off of here called Mentawai. You get a lot of Australian surfers. It's one of the best places to surf. Those who have come for... Uh, to see the indigenous tribe here, the Mentawai people, which I did, um, and Alan used to be a guide for. He hasn't done it in a while. There's not as much demand for it anymore since the pandemic. Um, I don't know, guys. <laughs> Here's the men's side right here. I guess I could, yeah, let's try to go back in. Uh, but not a lot of people come here. But what that means is when you come to Padang, you have like an authentic experience. The tourism here is for people on this island and the prices, Padang is not a cheap place. 
uh, because people here are wealthy, but um, food here is not expensive. So you can easily eat for a couple of dollars and it's really, really good food. All right, let's go back through here. If we can get out. Oh, and did I mention almost everyone has a motorbike? I think the number of motorbikes to people, there are more motorbikes than people. All right, so you can see here, she did not have, she might have taken it off or she doesn't have her headscarf on right now. All right, Let's see, look how beautiful this mosque is, it's so nice. I am gonna take off my shoes once again. Let's see what we can do here. The only thing about taking off my shoes is I have to put down All right. All right, I'm gonna take off my shoes. You know, I just went to Cambodia, and in Cambodia, you have to take your shoes off everywhere. It is considered very rude to wear your shoes anywhere. Yeah, um, motorcycles are very affordable. So I would say, like a good Honda, I think costs 1700. So not affordable for everyone, certainly not the less fortunate. But I think that's why people here are so generous. I got those shoes in Cambodia as well because we went to the Raffles, which is a five-star resort. They invited us. And I only had, well, let me fix this. I only had uh, flip-flops and sports sandals. And I thought, we can't go into the dining room with that. So I got those shoes. And then Alan got uh, like little fake leather sandals. All right, let's see if we can find him somewhere. I don't really want to go down there. Uh, I don't. Let me just see if I can see him somewhere. I think people might be praying again. If I know Alan, I don't think he's here anymore. He might have gone looking for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm allowed. It just says when you came in. They're not like super strict. I just don't know where Alan would be. This is why you always have to think. Oh, you can see. So this was all filled up beforehand. And now it's not. All right. I don't have a key to the place right now, but it's no big deal. The hotel knows who I am, they'll let me in. Let me just put my shoes back on. And I stick you right here. This is still the sermon. Oh, I do have Alan shoes. Good point. I guess I will hang out somewhere. This place has really... All right, I want to get in, look. I'm just gonna try to get in the shade somewhere. Not here. Mm. 
All right, here we go. Uh, how do I get in the shade? Maybe here. Whew. All right, I know that was shaky. I apologize about that. Okay. I think I'm going to end this live stream here. This was my first mobile live stream. So everyone, thank you so much for joining in. Um, I just want to let you know about the rest of the day. So as I said, Alan's family, I don't think they were here. There, there's so many people here. Maybe they were. They might have either gone to another mosque or they have decided to pray at home. Um, so next up, we are going to their house to have Eid breakfast, lunch, meal, um, where there's a special Eid cake. And then also they've made some dishes that they have every um, Eid. One of them is like a typical of this region. It is uh, a curry. And then it also has like this compressed rice cake in it. I will take pictures of that for everyone and put it up on YouTube community. And then also the cake. I don't know what the cake is going to be like. But after that, then we are going to What's the other place we're going to? We're eating three times. Then we're going to go to see his friend, and we're going to have soto, which is a soup, a very typical soup from here. It probably will have dried beef in it and a clear broth. I will take pictures of that. And then we're going somewhere else to eat. I can't remember. But today is all about eating, visiting. And so Hi. I think Alan is actually going to try to do a YouTube Live by putting his phone on his uh, phone on his bike and we're going to drive around the city because today is all about visiting people so it will be exciting it's rainy season here right now but the rain doesn't come until night so it's actually perfect you can visit people all day and then around six o'clock it just pours anyway thank you so much for joining me on this live it was a little bit hectic but I think I've learned a lot and I'm going to maybe do some more live stuff like this if I feel like it's something worth seeing you know, I wouldn't have made a video about this, but I feel like it was kind of interesting. If you thought it was interesting to see, let me know, because I do think sometimes there are things that are interesting to see or I enjoy, but I never put on live. Then maybe I will start doing that from now on. Anyway, today is Wednesday, I think. Have a good Wednesday. And I will follow up with all of the pictures of the food because I'm sure it'll be delicious. Bye guys, and thank you so much. And that, actually, I can't see. How do I turn this off? Oh, here we go. <laughs>